Welcome to the second module on RAP Site Waste Management Plan Template which covers data entry within the template. We will cover recording basic details, actions, waste forecasts, carriers, actual waste movements and look at some of the simple KPI graphs the template automatically produces for you. The first module covered an introduction to the template and the third and final module covers the advanced features within the template. Also remember there is a template training workbook available from the Site Waste Management Plan section of RAP's website and that takes you through the template in a step-by-step -step process. So let's start to progress through the template, clicking on Enter Basic Details first. This is a simple blank form, so let's fill in some details. Principal Contractor. And note that we get drop-down options here. So let's say it's a retail and that it's a new construction. On the metrics we can select a number of items so let's go for footprint of site, 1000 meters. You can also select from a number of different metrics here and these are graphed later on within the KPI sheet. You can also set project targets so let's select total waste and go for 150 tons for example. You can also fill in the start and end date and that completes the basic details page. There are two ways to navigate through the template once you're in it. You can click on the progression bar up here, the little navigation bar, or you can click on the tab down here. However, let's click on the actions tab up here. The template always highlights where you are in blue. In this case, each actions box is highlighted because it's one sheet we return to as we progress through the template. Notice there's a question here. This wording is taken from the English Site Waste Management Plan regulations and so by clicking on this drop down and answering this question, in this case I have recorded any decisions taken before the swamp was drafted on the nature of the project, construction method or materials employed. So by clicking on this drop down and answering yes, the template builds up an idea of how we are performing against each regulatory requirement. Remember our overall compliance is shown on the home page. The waste action sheet is a simple empty form. So using this drop down, we select waste prevention action and you record in here what that action might be. For example, coordinating floor to ceiling heights. To reduce plasterboard cutoff, the action owner might be the architect. You can pop in a reference here to any particular project document say which waste stream that relates to, so here it would be to reduce plasterboard cutoffs. So select gypsum, then select the next material type that's given. Estimated cost savings, so say for example this may save us £3,000 and save 2 tonnes. Scrolling across, we can put a date for completion and whether that is complete or incomplete. We will return to the Waste Actions tab as we progress through the template, so let's go on to the next page now, Forecast Waste. Note at the top it highlights in blue where we are, and there is a compliance question relating to the English Site Waste Management Plan regulations that needs answering here. This is the page where you record the waste forecast. You could take your forecast from previous experience or use RAP's online tool, such as the Designing Out Waste tool or Net Waste tool, to generate a forecast. You complete this table by selecting a number of the drop downs. So here we go and choose from construction, demolition, or excavation. What waste stream that relates to. That pre filters the material type that we're given. Any further description you can enter in here. Also note that in this box it pre filters what the suggested list of waste code is. You then go through and select whether the material is staying on site and being reused, recovered or recycled or going off-site as segregated or mixed. So let's say off-site segregated. Let's say we're forecasting 10 tonnes and note how the template has calculated that that would equate to 7.87 cubic metres. This is because the template automatically converts mass to volume as it has conversion factors for each material. And you can record who provided that forecast.
you would then go through and complete this page by filling in a line item for each forecasted waste material. Let's progress and click on the next tab, the Actions tab. So this brings us back to the Waste Actions tab and we would select the second item, Waste Reduction Actions. For example, achieving cut and fill balance. Let's say the action owner is the contractor and the waste stream relates to inert soil and stones. Let's say that saved us £3,500 on landfill tax and it was 1,000 tonnes. And again, you can pop in a date completion if you want to and say whether the action is complete or incomplete. Let's click on the next button which is Specify Waste Carriers. Again, notice the blue highlight at the top and a bunch of questions to answer for regulatory compliance against the English regulations. This is the page where we record waste carriers and the facilities that we intend to use. We only have to enter this information once as the information is pulled through to latter stages. So let's enter in some information here. Andrew's skip hire. You would enter the contact details and registration numbers and so on. And then specify the waste management facilities. Andrew's material recycling facility. Select what type of facility that is. Notice that the template automatically assumes diversion from landfill target here. However, I would want to say that I'm going to achieve 85% with this particular recycling facility. And so you would complete this sheet with all of the specified waste carriers and facilities that you intend to use for your project. So let's click on the next button, Plan Waste Destinations. Notice again the blue highlight and the regulatory compliance questions that need answering. Also a total summary of all of the materials that we've entered so far and a signed declaration part that you can sign off at this project stage if you want to. So the template pulls through waste forecast data into this page here and we can see the information that we've already entered and it's a case of clicking here and selecting the facility. Also notice it has selected 85% which we entered previously. Any waste that is selected to be retained on site is shown in this little box here and then demolition waste is shown below and excavation waste. Let's click on the actions tab to return to that tab for the last time. So here we would select the third option which is waste management and recovery. For example we could enter in the fact that we've negotiated a high recovery rate with a waste management contractor of 85%. Pop in the action owner and whether that relates to any particular waste stream. In this case it wouldn't because it would be across the whole project. And any cost savings or waste reduced. This is a recovery action so it wouldn't necessarily need to enter information into that box there. So let's click on the next button which is enter actual waste movements. Again notice in blue where we are. At the top here we have the waste totals page which populates once we have completed the actual waste movements table. Notice how this actual waste movements table is in exactly the same format as the forecast waste table, so you complete it in the same way. So let's click on construction. Let's go for concrete. Whether the material is staying on site or going off site. Which carrier that we intend to use, pulled through from the previous page. Which destination we intend to use, again pulled through from the previous page. You can see just here we have an 85% recovery rate. If you want to override that for an individual skip you can do so and enter that information here. Pop in the date of movement, how many tons that waste movement was, how much it cost, and it will give you a pounds per ton figure here. Alternatively if you do want to enter the information in cubic meters you can do so. If you sent one waste stream to multiple destinations, simply enter the waste stream a number of times, for example a number of lines with the same material type, and then select each destination the waste was sent to. Then it is simply a case of completing a line per waste movement in the rest of the table as your project progresses. So let's click on the last button. This brings us back to the basic details page, and this is where the client and principal contractor can sign off the plan. There are also blank areas to record any deviations from the plan here and further down any lessons learnt here. Finally let's have a quick look at the KPI graphs the template automatically generates. 
So let's click on this button up here. Note the template highlights in blue where we are. This drop down here at the top allows us to select what graphs are showed and remember it will graph any metric that you entered in the basic details page. There are graphs for total waste in tons, total waste in cubic meters, and total waste to landfill in tons, and total waste to landfill in cubic meters. That completes the second training module on the Site Waste Management Plan template. We have covered recording basic details, actions, waste forecasts, carriers, actual waste movements, and looked at some of the KPI graphs that the template automatically produces for you. Please also remember there is a template training workbook available from the Site Waste Management Plan section of RAP's website, and that takes you through the template in a step-by-step -step process. The third and final module covers the advanced features within the template, and I encourage you to watch it.